Hello and welcome back. Episode 3. Uh, we're talking about schematics here. We're talking about roadmaps, how to navigate them. Uh, there's a lot of technicians out there that really struggle here. Uh, and I can kind of understand the anxiety of it looking at different modeled units when there's so much going on on the roadmap that's a little overwhelming. Uh, so I like to try to break things down and just find a starting point. I did choose this particular wiring diagram uh, because it's very easy. It's a very beginner level one and gives us a lot to talk about. Uh, I think everybody should be able to at least be able to navigate this map. So when we look at this map, we want to find a starting point. Let's just talk about what's going to power the board. Okay, so right in here in this area, L1 and L2 is going to power our board. There's a couple different places we could test here, right at the transformer coming in, uh, but we'd like to test it right at the board to make sure that that board indeed is getting the 120 volts. And I've highlighted our path for high voltage, line voltage in yellow, and our secondary control voltage in green. Uh, that way we can easily see. And when we look, we see coming off the transformer that it's a blue wire and a red wire, right? Coming right onto the board, on secondary one and secondary two so if i wanted to test to make sure that that uh, transformer is good and it is giving me good voltage i can test right here right uh, right across or i can hopscotch right to it catch ground and go right to that pin and i'm going to see 24 uh, catch a ground go right to this pin and i'm going to see line voltage Moving down the roadmap, we're going to the next place I see a lot of people struggling with, and that's going to be speed taps. Uh, this is our blower motor. The map even tells us BLWN, blower motor. And we see a couple things on here. We see that a couple legs, the high speed is black, and it's going to the cool tap onto our control board. And we see our blue speed is a medium low speed, and that is moved over into the heat tap. So when this particular furnace uh, is calling for cool, it's going to be on high speed with the fan. And uh, when they call for heat, they're asking for blue or medium, uh, medium low speed. Now, notice these other, there's two more taps coming out here, right? There's a yellow and there's a red. There's a high and a low speed. Uh, these things have landed on the board onto some spare spots. If a control board doesn't have these, you can wire nut those, right? Don't leave them hanging, uh, but you can wire nut and cut the yellow and the red and just have them wire nutted off to the side. Uh, we also noticed that on this particular blower motor, what do we have? This is a PCM motor, so it has a capacitor, and we see brown wire uh, coming out of it and a brown wire coming into the capacitor. So that's really easy when you're doing a motor change out. You can see, oh, those two brown wires, those are going to the cap. I'm going to take that black. I'm going to take it to cool. I'm going to take the blue. I'm going to take it to heat. And I'm going to cap off the other two. Good to go. And, you know, we're out of there. Notice the symbol. Uh, we're looking at this symbol right here. We need to get used to seeing this symbol, okay? This is a temperature overload switch. Uh, when this motor gets too hot, which you're gonna tell by touching the motor, it's too hot to touch, uh, this thing is gonna open and that's gonna throw it out of the circuit and that fan will not, will not go. So we need to make sure uh, that that is not activated and we can do that pretty easy uh, with our meter right here. If we're, it's summertime, well, we'll talk about winter because we're in winter. Uh, when the thermostat's calling for heat, I should be able to go from a ground to this heat tap right here, and I should see line voltage. If I'm not seeing line voltage here and it says zero, then there is no reason that fan should be turning on. Uh, neither is that your problem because the board right here is saying zero. It's saying, hey, don't turn on. Uh, so we got to go look somewhere else for why that board thinks it's not in heat mode. For most field applications, uh, you're going to be able to put your hand on this motor and say, hey, this thing's too hot. Uh, when we're looking at the motor that is too hot to the touch, is it covered in lint? Is it covered in dog hair? Is it covered in debris? Can the motor not breathe? That's a good first spot to, to start at. It's getting that motor clean so it can breathe. Uh, is the blower wheel corroded with dirt and filth and things like that from uh, bad filters or no filters? You know, these small things can all lead to a motor overheating uh, that you could correct on the spot. Uh, but typically when I got a tech in the field, that's that's what I'm looking for. Does that heat tap have 120 volts coming to it? Oh, yeah, it does. And the motor's not turning on? No, it's not. And the capacitor's good? Yes, it is. Okay, change the motor. 
typically in that type of situation, the motors bind it up and we can even hear this or hear the hum. And, you know, we do need to make sure there's nothing trapped in there that's making it be binded, uh, something stuck inside of it. Uh, and if not, and the bearings are just seized on it, it's definitely time. We just need to change that motor uh, and get out of the customer's space. Uh, moving up next on our roadmap, we're going to talk about uh, delay timers. Obviously, with these uh, heat delays, we're talking about heat mode, and we're talking about blower off delay. So after the thermostat is satisfied and we lose our flame naturally, how long until that blower motor is going to turn off? Uh, this is important for a couple reasons. You know, um, we don't want the homeowner to feel cold after the heat exchanger is done cooled down, but the fan's still blowing across a now cold heat exchanger. They're going to feel that coldness on them, and it's not going to equal comfort for them. Uh, so, you know, looking at ours, what are we looking at? How many are there? I have had people try to tell me, well, Mr. Service Tech, there's four switches on this board and I only see two. So let's talk about it. There's only two switches, okay? These are dip switch settings. And this configuration on the left clearly is showing us that if I wanted 225 seconds worth of on, then both ticks need to be in the left-hand column. Uh, it is that straightforward. Do not overthink it. Let's talk about some reasons we may want to increase or decrease it aside from making my customers too cold. We could also be in a situation where we're wasting heat. Uh, there's no reason to keep my ductwork warm uh, to just have the heat just sitting up in there until it naturally dissipates into the attic or the closet that the, my unit's in. We want as much of those BTUs available to enter my comfort space. Uh, we paid for that usage, so we definitely want to move that heat uh, every last bit of it. So. Um, perhaps my blower isn't running long enough and so therefore you know after 90 seconds it turns off but my heat exchanger is still wicked hot yeah that's kind of a waste so we can bump it up a little bit more add some more time to it and that's something that the technician really needs to kind of pay attention to uh, when it comes to installs um, and you know that number could change in the winter time depending on where that unit is uh installed at so we need to kind of be monitoring okay flame is off where's my temp probe at when do i really start losing it when does the fall start happening on my temp probe and we can make sure that our customers uh delay off is appropriate for their applications up next we're going to talk about another motor we see we got a motor here a component and it's the idm the induced draft motor this is straightforward very easy to test we have highlighted in yellows so the line voltage uh, is black and white coming from pins one and pin three so if i have a call for heat from my thermostat i could test between one and three between black and white and i should see line voltage coming there same thing do i have line voltage and my motor's not turning on what's going on or do i not even have it yet right i'm not even getting the signal we could also hopscotch on uh, from a ground straight on to pin one when we have a call for heat and sure enough we should be able to see our line voltage there um, look here's that symbol again i said we should take a look for it also has an overload uh, inside of it that's temperature sensitive so that winding can open up and close on its own uh, typically when that winding is open once again the motor is going to be too hot to touch uh, this particular induced draft motor also has a capacitor and look it also has some brown wires coming off brown coming into it and brown coming out so changing them out is fairly straightforward uh, they usually come with their own plug right there uh, but if not you can see exactly how to wire it up at Moving upwards on my roadmap, we see a landing spot for my thermostat controls. Okay, so between R and C, I should see 24 volts coming from that transformer we tested earlier. It's going to be right there. This is what's feeding from the thermostat into the thermostat. Uh, so, uh, you know, I like to hopscotch here. If I'm looking for a W, I need to go ground to W and see, do I have 24 volts there or do I not? Is W getting its signal or is it not? Um, these are all very straightforward tests and this is exactly where we can test them. If we wanted to jump this unit, we could jump it between R and W uh, and apply 24 volts there and that would start the heat sequence cycle, which would be induced draft motor turns on and we start moving into these controls, my favorite place. And, you know, typically uh, on a down call, I'm here pretty fast. Line voltage, do I have it? Control voltage, do I have it? Do I even have the call from the thermostat? I test right here. 
how we can know really fast, do we have a thermostat problem or do we have something inside of the unit going on? If I'm not getting a call on that W pin and I go to my thermostat and my thermostat's saying, hey, I'm giving a call on that W pin, we can already say, hey, dude, that thermostat's bad. We can take the thermostat off the wall and we can jump it from there, R to W, and we can see that, bada bing, bada boom, everything starts, the heat sequence starts to turn on. So change customer's thermostat out uh, and be gone. Here we are back into my favorite subject, controls. Uh, we're here a lot. These are typically the number one things that are failing is something in the control house. And it's either those controls are being met, right, due to not being serviced or things malfunctioning, or these little parts are starting to get uh, glitchy and finicky and they're starting to open and close outside of their uh, predestined parameters. Um, here on this control board, we're looking at a plug. Okay, I love plugs. Plugs are pinned. Plugs are numbered. Plugs are color-coded. We see coming right out of one, we're coming into a red. Red rolls right through. What is that? LS. That's a limit switch. There's that temperature symbol again I said we should keep our eyes open for. It comes out of the limit switch and moves into the flame rollout sensor. Also another temperature switch. There's that same signal again. So temperature, 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 temperature. Uh, when these temperatures are met or when they think they're being met, it's going to open up that line and we're not going to have that voltage passing that point. Now, pins three and four, we're coming out a orange line and we're coming into a normally open switch. We see that says NO, right? And C on the other side. It's a normally open switch. This isn't a temperature switch. We don't have that same symbol. We have a, se a separate symbol here. And this is pressure, indicating that when a suction or a pressure change is being met, this switch closes and that allows voltage to pass through. Okay, what did we just learn just by looking at that? So we learned that voltage is not going to pass through this pressure switch until something closes it, okay? The only thing that can create that pressure is going to be the induced draft motor, right? We talked about that earlier. So the very first thing in this furnace's sequence going to be thermostat cost for heat, the W pin lines up. The induced draft motor, L1, that, that first plug right there lights up with line voltage. The induced draft motor comes on, creates the suction. The suction is read by what we're looking at on our screen right now, which is this normally open, normally closed pressure switch. The switch closes. This passes voltage all the way back into this pin right here, which we see is a number four. Uh, once this voltage is done, we get into the next stage, which is going to be lighting up the gas valve. It's going to be this blue and this green wire headed all the way over into here. And we see that the gas valve ends up going between 2 and 8, right? 2 is the blue leading to the gas valve, comes out of the gas valve, a green, and heads back to pin 8. So we can see, we can hopscotch with our meter really fast right here and follow that sequence of operations to see exactly when there's supposed to be voltage and is there or is there not, where are we dropping that call at? Um, the last pin here we have is the middle one, which is pin number six, and we see that's a flame sensor. So this flame sensor is going to send voltage back that it says, hey, I do have the flame, and that's going to complete the cycle that's going to let everything uh, continuously run on heat. I didn't forget about our ignition source. I just kind of kept it for last because it's very, once again, straightforward. It's a two-pin plug, uh, black and white. Uh, and we can see that when we test it straight to pin one, uh, we should have that voltage there when the gas valve is opened. So if we're hopscotching correctly, we've made our way to the gas valve, the gas valve open, we saw it electronically. We also heard it in the physical, right? The gas valve open, the gas is pouring, uh, but nothing is glowing. Uh, no hot surface igniter is igniting. There's, there's no spark ignition system. Nothing is happening. Uh, we can come straight to here, and for uh, a couple moments, you're going to see it. Do you have that 120 volts? And then it's gone, or does it constantly stay zero? Uh, if it constantly stayed zero, uh, that board never told it to. We got a board problem. If it gave the 120 volts directly to that hot surface igniter and it never ignited, we have to change that igniter out. The last thing we're going to talk about today uh, is the relays. Uh, in the old days, these relays used to be separate, used to be changeable. I could pull it out, uh, swap it out with another normally open, normally closed relay. Uh, now, thanks to the comfort of the control board, we've lost a lot of that access. So these relays are typically built onto the board. Sometimes we can tap on them and persuade them to open or close, uh, but it already shows you it's somewhat faulty. It should be changed out. 
Um, so each of these relays, there's hot surface igniter right here, relay. There's induced draft motors relay. There's the blower motors relay. There's the gas valve relay. Those are the main ones um, that we can just see all of those have their own relays. They're all conveniently right here on the board. Um, if you're having one of these, uh, say the induced draft motor isn't tapping, isn't turning on, you could try to tap on that IDR relay, tap, 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 and see if you can get it to release. And that at least could get your uh, customer through a little time period, get you a board on order uh, that's got a new relay in there that's opening and closing like it should. For those of you that made it to the end of my training video, uh, I thank you for your attention. I really hope that you learned something. I hope that it cleared something up for you. Uh, drop me a comment if it didn't or if you'd like me to digress a little bit more. In the future, depending on how this video produces, uh, I may start bringing on more advanced wiring diagrams and schematics to go through. Uh, ice machines, uh, you know, VRF systems, uh, mini split wirings. You know, all, we can kind of start getting to a little bit more electric heat strips and we can run those roadmaps too, just like this one and just kind of flow our way through them. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss some content. Uh, next week's content is going to be a little bit different. We're taking a break from Tekken for just a second, and I'm going to answer a call that I got for making some sales content. So uh, we're going to be discussing how if a customer does need new equipment, what am I looking for to give an accurate quote um, so that everybody's happy, the homeowner, the company, and the technician, the person who sold that job, everybody's good to go. So that's going to be all next week's content uh, is going to be uh, how to get that knocked out. So pay attention. Drop me some content and comments on what you would like to see, and I will do my best to get it out there.